This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. And we welcome into the Open Alliance show, team number 342, the Bernie Magnetos coming in uh, from uh, Peachtree now. I mean, because you're South Carolina, now you're part of Peachtree. Uh, interesting uh, transition to go from uh, traditional events to district events this year. So excited to speak uh, more uh, with you guys and hear more about you. And uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves and uh, let us know what you do on the team. So my name is Jacob. I'm the team captain, and I'm also a programmer. I'm Sushil. I am the CAD lead. And I'm also technically programmer. I got to ask you guys real quick. How do you feel in regards to going from traditional events to, to districts this year being in Peachtree? So having been around with the team a long time and having been to a couple of regionals even before I was on the team and one last year, I'm definitely happy with moving to districts because it's a lot more of a, it's a lot more of a fast paced experience. And we, typically have our issues typically with regionals is when we had teams who are coming from like really far distances away that happened to be like far outside of the playing class that you'd see in the Southeast. So it's definitely, I'm definitely good with it because I think it will be better for us as a team and better for the growth of teams in South Carolina. Sushil. I agree with Jacob. Perfect. Greg, you've, I mean, you got through in Texas, you went from traditional to district too. How's it impacted uh, your experience as well. I mean, I love I love districts. I think they're great. Um, for me, it always came down to the iteration process, right? So we've seen tremendous growth in uh, what teams can do and how much they can get out of the season because you can go through that iteration uh, multiple times in a season as opposed to just minimal learning and then trying to apply that a year from now, especially with no bags. So. Um, I bet there's lots of regional teams out there who wish they were playing in districts because of uh, no bag, especially. So no kidding. Uh, you, you'll love it. You'll love it. Well, Bernie Magnitos, we're going to talk about uh, some of your strategy and the impact on design. We got some CAD to show off uh, on Onshape as well. So we're excited for that. And some software integration. What do you guys want to start with first? So we're going to go ahead and start with the, the game strategy and how that informed our design. So at the very beginning of the season at kickoff, we split into a bunch of different groups and we read the rules and then we kind of come back together and we do a, a wants and needs sort of board. And so what we figured out during our kickoff, what, during kickoff is that the charge station was gonna be the most efficient way to score points. And so that, and that kind of informed our drivetrain decision a lot and it pushed us away from Mechanum. Yes, um, from past years, because of design this year, Sorry, this year we have um, chose tank instead of mechanum, and that's really funny because previous seasons or years where um, other teams have recommended to us that we um, should use tank, we use mechanum instead, and it works successfully. But this year you guys are going to uh, to a tank drive. What was uh, kind of the main decision behind that versus either mechanum or swerve or any other drive train? Why was uh, the six wheel best for you? So we decided to, so we attempted swerve in the off season, but that was because of shipping delays and stuff and some issues we had with the software, we weren't able to get that successfully working. And because of the traction issues that Mechanum would have on the charge station, we decided to go with the six wheel WCD. That's very cool. Yeah. So, you know, you say your team traditionally uses Mechanum. Um, and uh, so, so traction is a thing that you, you consider um, so with your game, how does that impact your game strategy if you are not going to be able to move, you know, holonomically around the field? So our, the kind of the way that affects our game strategy is just fast, really. It's, it's just, it's, it's, we want to increase our cycle times so that we don't have to work, 
so to make up for the lack of being able to strafe. And so our tank, Beckon, our tank is this year is geared to be excessively fast, closer to closer to twenty two feet per second. Pretty <laughs> fast. That's uh, that's interesting. How do you how do you control something like that? Because that's when you go when you're going that fast. I mean, you're crossing the field in you know like two seconds or less. So for that, it's a mix of lots of lots of driver practice and skill. But we also have our our software kind of accounts for that in a way this year. We have a we're going to have a slider on our a slider or a number input on our smart dashboard that lets us change the the speed multiplier on a fly so we can on the fly so we can reduce or we can reduce the speed of the robot or we can up the speed of the robot at any time during a match. Wow, yeah, that's a, that's an incredibly fast drivetrain, so I uh, I look forward to uh, seeing that. But make sure your driver has uh, plenty of practice. Um, I guess. One of the other questions is, uh, with that speed, are you planning on uh, Dukes of Hazarding over the, <laughs> over over the ramp during the during the game? Because, you know, you probably could. So right now we don't actually have any plans to jump over the the charge station at all, intentionally. So that's um that's kind of where we are with that. Well, you guys got a couple, uh, uh, looks like at least one or two prototypes uh, that I'm seeing around. So why don't you tell us about uh, what's in your hand, and then I can't wait to jump into your cat as well. Okay, so our first prototype was this. <laughs> well, it was an actuating arm on a... Uh, <laughs> it was an actuating arm with wheels, and it would pick up both cones and cubes. So like that... And, and then we have a cone down there. And cone that would hold it like that. And we also came up with, but what we found out with this design is that it was, it, it didn't work out for us really well. So we went with this design where it's like, one second. We attempted, yeah, we attempted to use this at near the beginning of the season. Which was like, just pick, picks up the cone and then holds it. Oh, yeah, hold it. Yeah, it didn't work either. So, no. so where are you guys at from a, a progress wise? And if, if those two aren't the ones uh, that's going to work out for your team, where's kind of your thought process right now? We have a CAD file that we would like to show to you guys. Sure. And it's our it's our current design. It's our current design for the gripper. The reason we ended up having to kind of scrap the one we were initially going to go with was space limitations. Within the bumper cut out. So, can you describe a little bit more yeah. uh, what what's what's uh, this uh, intake comprised of, and uh, how you came up uh, uh, about this one to be the one that you're looking and moving forward with? It centers both of the um, it's called the cubes and cones, and then it would easily pick up the cone and cube. Well, yeah. And so more specifically with that, the, the small wheels that you can see on the screen right now, that is to pick up the cube, and then the larger wheels are for grabbing the cones. Got it. So you want, you want to do two positions, basically. So you're going to hold the cone with one. The cone goes all the way deep into the intake, and then the cube kind of gets held uh, right there on the end. Exactly. Pretty cool. Um, so are all, are all those wheels spinning the exact same speed on the intake, or, or are you varying the speed? Yes, sir. They are designed to spin the same speed. Let's take us through. Uh, I know you guys uh, have a full superstructure as well, too, uh, in CAD. So why don't we bring that up and uh, tell us more about uh, what's gone into that uh, process for your robot so far. So what we've decided to go with for the arm this year was a six-bar six bar linkage because it has worked with us. I mean, we've had experience with it during 2019, I believe. And so we went with that. And it did not take any time with prototyping. So, and it, for, and that, that familiarity with that also helps in this, in software, because we've done the, the code for that is going to look kind of very similar to what we've had to do with, with our 2019 robot. Can you explain a, a, sync, a six bar a little bit more to me? Like, I mean, we hear four bar, reverse four bar, double four bar, that sort of thing. You don't hear six bar too often. It's kind of the same thing, but like instead of having four bars, there would be two. 
there'd be two um I have to draw this out. Um there'd be two bars that is longer and it's gonna be connected to the end. So it's gonna be flush. Wow. If you can imagine a little Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it really is essentially a four-bar arm, but just plus two. That's really it. Right. So it just gets a little bit of extra extension. Mm -hmm. Got it. So that's cool. So, so you want to, So the goal is you're going to use the linkage to try to control um, your end effector so it's always kind of horizontal, or are you doing anything with the linkage to, like, adjust where it is in the process? So, no, the, the end effector is designed to always be horizontal with where we're trying to score just to make it easier on Got it. And so you're and you're so your overall robot is you've got this really fast drive train, you've got a four bar arm, and then you're gonna be picking up and scoring with the same uh, roller claw that we saw before, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. I mean, I, I I do I do really think that like a lot of the teams like that just get robots that are pretty straightforward and get a lot of driver practice. Uh, are going to do really well this season. Um, how long until you think you've got a, a full robot driving around on the field? So actually, right over, so right over here, we started our our chassis assembly today, and so it should be about a week, week and a half ish until we have our robot fully assembled and getting it driving around. And the reason for and the reason for that being the reason for that being so easy for us to do is because over here we actually took the time this off season to assemble an old kitbot chassis that we just kind of had sitting around. So our mechanical students and our programming students and our electrical students are already familiar with the mechanics of how something like this is going to work, which translate into which translates into way faster speed for getting the actual chassis together. Got it. Yeah. So, so you, you're, you're basically taking what you learned in the off season and applying it to your, your in season knowledge. I mean, I think that's great. Uh, we hear a lot about teams who did, uh, you know, swerve in the off season and then try to do that during the main season. But I think that any off season uh, build or technology, you know, development skill building is a really valid thing. And so it's, it's great to see you taking something you've done previously and applying it during the season. Well, guys, while we have a, a minute or so left, and I don't want to leave software out because it, that's, it's always at the end, right? So uh, tell us about uh, next steps for your software. Anything else you want to wrap up with for your team? So a lot of our, a lot of our software stuff this year is going to be heavily reliant on, on vision. Specifically, we're, we're, using the, we're going to use the limelight for both reflective tape and April tags. And the main, the main intent we have for that right now is so that the driver can press a button and the robot is going to auto align so it's pretty much like straight on with the target to make the, to make it easier to place game pieces and then we're also going to use the april tags and the reflective tape for driving and autonomous for scoring awesome well oh, and then no go ahead we might also use it we have a transition back here so we might also we actually have an auto balance code right now that we kind of drew inspiration for rebound rumble from from Rebound Rumble 4, but we're gonna refine it probably to make use of April tags as a way to make sure it's level. Well, awesome guys. Uh, as always, time is short. We really appreciate you taking the time to tell us more about what Bernie McNeidos has going on. Uh, we'll be checking back with you uh, after week six. So hopefully a pretty close to completed robot at that point. I believe you guys compete uh, week two. So you don't have a whole lot of time anyways uh, by the time we'll see that there. So very excited to see that. We wish you best of luck and uh, can't wait to see further progress. Good luck guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SolidWorks to design great products. SolidWorks can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SolidWorks.com first to register your team. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
keep the conversation going, and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now, and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.